Hey, what's up, my little bag of bees? We are going to continue talking about graphing sine and cosine today. So we're going to just make it a little bit more complicated. And I know it's already pretty complicated. It's already a little confusing. What do you mean waves? What do you mean period? But we're, we're going to make it just a little more complicated today. Today, we're going to bring in amplitude. This part is easy peasy lemon squeezy this part period changes this is difficult difficult lemon difficult so you know it, it's half of these six dozen of those you know but whatever um cool so let's just real talk the real talk no real quick talk about some vocabulary okay so the period this was on the last slide but uh, not last slide, last lesson, but the period is the distance on the x-axis that is traveled by one full oscillation of the periodic function. Um, there's a bunch of ways you can say one full oscillation. You can say like one full, most people just say one full period, but uh, one full cycle. Um, it's What we're talking about is a complete hill and a complete dip. It doesn't matter if you cut it up into maybe like half a hill, a dip, and then the other half of the hill. Either one of these totally counts. So we're talking about the full thing, cool? One period is how far on the x-axis we go, okay? New vocabulary word is the amplitude the amplitude is the distance from the midline to either the maximum or the minimum. It's or because they're the same distance. So if we have our midline here, your amplitude is the distance from this midline to either that maximum right there or down to the minimum. Important uh, trait of the amplitude, let's put like a little asterisk there. Amplitudes are always positive. Uh, you can't say the amplitude is like negative four because uh, it's a distance, right? Like you can't be negative four feet tall. You can't be negative four amplitude. It just, it's not a thing. So when we talk about amplitude, it should always be a positive number. Okay, cool. So there's our two vocab words. This is the only new one. Um, yeah, maybe uh, one more quick note about period. To find a period... Um, your period is the distance from any spot on your wave to the corresponding spot on the next cycle of that wave. So what that means is you can measure it from peak to peak. That will give you a period. You could also measure from trough to trough or valley to valley. Um, there is a little bit of danger in measuring on the midline. When you measure from here, a lot of students are really tempted to measure to the next time it touches the x axis. But if you notice, this spot is kind of on the uphill of this slope. This one is on the downhill. So those are not corresponding points. Uh, the point we would want to look at would be the next one on an uphill. So you just got to make sure if you're looking at something on the midline, Make sure you skip one intersection just because that's gonna be like the downside of the other one. You have to go all the way down and start coming back up before you measure it. Okay, cool. So we got our vocabulary. Let's go look at some formulas really quick just to warn you ahead of time. Um, and then we will go do a couple of examples, okay? So we have already talked about H and K. I need to give you uh, maybe a, an amendment on K, right? We had our constitutional meeting about the formula. We said H was the horizontal shift and then the Mathematician Bureau of uh, the Greater Maricopa Community Colleges or some garbage like that. They had a meeting and they voted on it. We have to amend our constitution. H is no longer the horizontal shift. It's related to it, but it's not quite it. So let's talk about the easy stuff first. K is always our vertical shift. 
there, we're, there's not a way to, to mess this up. We can't amend it. It's, it's good to go. That's our vertical shift. A here is in charge of our amplitude. Um, our amplitude is equal to the absolute value of A. So if we have like three sine of X, the amplitude is three. If you have negative three sine of X, it's still three because it's the absolute value of this. Um, if you think way back to like parabolas or absolute values or square root graphs or anything like that, do you remember what happens if you put a negative in front of your A? And you should all be screaming at your dog right now, like shaking your little chihuahua. It flips it. it and you're right, it does. It do flip it. So if A is negative, all that's going to do to our sine or cosine graph is it's going to take something that looks like this and then it's going to flip it into something that looks like that. Cool? Okay. So A is in charge of our amplitude and it's in charge of flipping the graph. Okay. Now let's talk about B. B is something that's going to give you a big headache. B is in charge of the period of our graph, meaning how wide the graph is when it completes a full cycle. But um, it's not just like if B is three, then the period is three. That's, that's not how that works. Um, luckily, we have this cool formula right here. So here is the formula you're going to use. Your period is equal to two pi divided by B. So in the last lesson, we had things like sine of x minus pi over 3 plus 2. The reason we never had to worry about this period before is because b was always 1. Because it's not there, it's the invisible coefficient 1. 2 pi divided by 1 is just 2 pi, which is kind of the default period for sines and cosines. So... It's not that this is, wasn't true back then. It's just that it was the easy case that always came out to the default, so we didn't have to worry about it. Today, we're going to have to worry about it. Okay. Now for our horizontal shift. Unfortunately, it is no longer just whatever H is because of this B right here. Um, there is a formula for it. So our horizontal shift is H divided by whatever b is. So if we, let's say we've got pi over two, here, let me maybe put this in a formula, uh, sine of two x minus pi over two, h is positive pi over two because the negative is part of the equation. So pi over two divided by two so what's half of a half of a pi? It's pi over four, okay? So our graph will only get shifted to the right pi over four, not half of pi, because this B kind of messes it up. Um, it's kind of difficult to explain to you why it messes it up, but if you care, if you're like, man, I really wanna have an intuitive understanding of why a coefficient inside the sine function on my x value messes up the horizontal shift, what I would say to do is make up like a real easy one of these, like y equals sine, just use this one right here, 2x minus pi over 2, uh, and just plug in a bunch of x values, right? Plug in like all the ones you like. Plug in 0, plug in pi over 6, plug in pi over three, plug in pi over two, and so on. Just like all the ones on the unit circle. Plug in all those, and then just look at a table of like x's and y's. And eventually you'll kind of be like, oh, the pattern, right? And even graph them, it helps. Um, yeah, if, if we were in person, and I thought that you guys were going to go to college for math, and I it was like, man, I've really got to prepare these kids for 
the the trials and tribulations of college level mathematics because they're going to go prove theorems for a living and build bridges no if i thought that i would make you do a bunch of this stuff by hand i think doing things the hard way is the best way to learn stuff but not all of you are going to be mathematicians so we'll, i'm going to teach you the easy way to do stuff um by just following patterns and hopefully uh, that's good enough for you guys. If it's not, then just go do it the hard way. You don't need me to do it the hard way. You can do it the hard way on your own, and then you'll really learn something. But, you know, I'm not your mom, so. All right, so let's go over my pro tips for graphing. We're going to remind ourselves what sine and cosine look like on the next slide, and then we'll do some examples. So if you are going to graph these not the hard way, uh, there's like a, an asterisk here, right? The asterisk says uh, you could just plug in um, random x's. How do you spell x's? X's? Possessive? I never know how to pluralize things like that anyway. You could just plug in random x's and calculate your y. Um, that will calculate this will you can graph anything in the whole world with this like if I gave you y equals the square root of the sine of x uh, absolute valued plus 2 right you could graph this thing right now you just pick x's it doesn't even matter what they are right because uh, you're putting them in a sign, you probably want like pies and stuff, like zero, pi over six, pi over three, etc. right? And then you just use a calculator to simplify this, and then you write down the y's that come out, and then magically, you will get a graph. It'll be cool. Um, for fun, you could do, for fun, he says, right? Um, I think the absolute value of sine is kind of cool. Um y equals sine of x squared is kind of interesting uh, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's a bunch of ways you can graph. But if we were trying to avoid learning anything, right? So we don't want to learn anything, why stuff happens or how patterns work or where they come from. I just want to know how do I get the right answer on the multiple choice question on my homework so I can go hang out and do hood rat stuff with my friends, then here are the pro tips to get you done with the homework as fast as possible, okay? Uh, and that's my, my soapbox speech for today. So, step one. You wanna draw your midline, max line, and minimum line. So you're gonna have your little x, y axis. Find the midline, the maximum, and the minimum, and put them on there because they're gonna help you graph, okay? Then you have to calculate the horizontal shift because remember, there's a formula for that now. Vertical shift, you don't calculate that, but go find it. It's just uh, K. And then your period, there is a formula for this. Calculate those things, probably write them down somewhere so that they're easy to find. Then you're going to label your X axis intelligently. I'll show you what this means when we get there but you're not gonna wanna use the exact same x-axis every single, uh, you're not even probably gonna graph these, you're gonna have multiple choice homework, but you know, if someone, if you like got stranded on a desert island, right? And there's like some uh, cannibals um, and they like hold a coconut to your head and they say, graph right or I'm, or I'm gonna pop you with a coconut uh, then you know you grab your stick and you draw your xy axis and then but I digress anyway uh, this would be important if you were actually graphing but you're probably just matching realistically on the homework but I digress uh, all right so we're gonna label our x-axis intelligently for we're going to determine if the graph starts on a midline at a maximum or at a minimum by looking at the function, sine or cosine, which is on the next slide. 
and the sine of a. Because remember, that leading coefficient, um, if we make it negative, it could flip stuff over. So then we're not gonna plot everything, right? We're not gonna get all the stuff. We're gonna get the important points and then kind of guesstimate the rest of it. So we'll get the minimums, the maximums, and all the stuff in the middle. And then we'll call it a day and just draw a squiggly line through it. Cool? All right. Um, so let's just remember the parent functions really quick and then we will uh, go graph some stuff. So for sine, remember, sine is the y's on our unit circle. So it starts at zero, goes up to these positive things, comes back down to zero. Here is pi. So it goes up, comes back down to zero at pi. The maximum is halfway in the middle, so at pi over two. Then down here, go another pi over two. We're down at negative one, and then it comes back to zero. So our sine graph starts at zero, ends at zero. Those are important things to know. In the middle, right, half of two pi would be one pi. It's at zero. And then halfway between the beginning, middle, and ends, it's either at a maximum or at a minimum. Cool? Okay. For cosine, remember this is the x values on a unit circle. So we start at one on the x axis. At 90 degrees, we're lined up with zero on the x axis. Then at pi, we're at negative one. At three pi over two, we're back at zero. And then once we get all the way to two pi, we're back at positive one. So our, our cosine graph looks kind of like that. Important things to note. It starts at the maximum and ends at the maximum. Halfway in between those, it's at a minimum. And halfway between your minimum and your maximum, you're at zero on both sides, okay? So notice there's a lot of fractions here, right? We've got the whole, we've got half, and then we have half of half, uh, which is also a quarter, right? So you want to think about your sine and cosine graphs in terms of the whole, which is a period, a half to get some other interesting points, and then a quarter to get the other important points. So basically what we're gonna do is find the period, put the end points in the middle, and then cut those in half and get the two interesting points, and then we're gonna guesstimate the rest of it from there. Cool? All righty. So let's do an example. All right, so we have y equals two sine of two x plus one. So right away, you can see I don't have an h in here, h equals zero. So we're gonna start off easy, not really doing a whole bunch with that horizontal shift, that way I don't scare you too much on the first example, okay? So let me try some, oh, God bless. Okay, I thought that was gonna clear all my tick marks. All right, so first thing we can see right here is k. That tells us our midline. And our midline is gonna be y equals whatever k is. So because it's plus one, we're gonna be at one. So let's go put that on our graph. Uh, let's see, let's make this purple because that's your favorite color. And we're gonna put a horizontal dash line at one. Okay, I'm gonna have each of these be one because we have to go up and down two from there. So to get your minimum and maximum, what that means is, or how we find that is it's the amplitude away from the midline. That's kind of the definition of amplitude. Our amplitude is the absolute value of this leading coefficient. So amplitude equals two. That means we go up two from this and down two from this to get our minimum and our maximum. So if I go up to one, two, Please be the same thing. Heck yeah. There's our maximum line. And if we go down two from the midline, one, two, there is our, I'll fix.
fix that. Let's move that up a little bit. Move that up a little bit. There we go. So we have our midline, our max, and our minimum. Uh, let's just write these down just in case. So minimum y equals negative 1. Maximum y equals 3. And I got these two numbers by just adding or subtracting 2 from the midline. All right. Our period, we have a formula for that. Period equals 2 pi divided by b. b is the coefficient of x inside the sine or cosine operation. So it's going to be 2 pi divided by 2. 2 is cancel. Our period is just pi. So what that means is on our graph, normally, let's say it looks like this, right? This is normally 2 pi. Because our period is now pi, it's going to take this whole thing and squish it into just pi, and our graph is going to look like that. You still get the full up and the full down. It's just condensed into a smaller period. Also notice, even though this number is like, I don't want to say big, but it's not a fraction, right? It's like a whole number. It's 2. It doesn't double our period. It cuts it in half. So just like um, h is reversed, meaning if we add 3, so let's say this was plus 3, we don't add 3. We go left 3, which is minus 3. You do the opposite of whatever b says. So instead of multiplying your period by 2, you divide it by 2. So you're going to start to notice a trend where anything that's inside the math operation that kind of defines the function, anything inside of that is reversed as far as transformations go. Um, that's just a handy thing to know for math in general. But Okay, so our period is pi. And then our horizontal shift, because h equals 0, we don't have a plus anything in there or a minus anything, our horizontal shift is 0. Okay, so let's run through this real quick. All right, draw the midline, max line, and midline. We did that. Calculate the horizontal shift, vertical shift, and period. We did that. Label the x-axis intelligently. All right, so let's go do that. So here's our x-axis. We could label it the normal way where we do just pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2, so on. Um, but then... Actually, yeah, let's just go ahead and do it that way. Um, really, the thing is you just want your axis to take up. Uh, you want to get an entire period on here, but you also don't want the entire graph to be here. You want to use as much of this as possible kind of within reason. But if reason dictates that that's too troublesome, then, you know, say la vie. You're going to be matching graphs anyway. Don't trip about it. So we're going to do... Uh, I'm going to just label them outside so we're not messing up our graph. So we'll do pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 2. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, and then this one will be pi. Okay. Um, you could label the rest of this, like you could do 7 pi over 6, and then uh, 4 pi over 3, and so on. But we're just going to make sure we get one full period. Anything beyond that is kind of just icing on the cake. So, all right. So we have our x-axis labeled so that we're going to use at least half of it. Um, if you're using less than half, then you might want to think about a smaller scale. Or uh, maybe if you use this scale and then you only get like that, th then you probably want to shrink this down and go maybe by pi over twos or pi's or something so it fits a little bit better. Okay, so we have that labeled. Let's go look at our steps. Label intelligently. Bingo, we did that. All right, determine if the graph starts on a midline at a maximum or at a minimum. So the way we do that is we look at the trig function. So ours is going to be sine. Sine always starts on the midline. It doesn't matter if it's a positive sign or negative sign. The first point should always be on your midline. Then we notice that sine goes up first. If 
we had a negative sign, this would flip over and go down first, but we don't, we have a positive sign. So because this is sine and we're not shifting horizontally, this starts at zero on the x-axis on the midline. So we'll put our first point. Then we want to go to the end of the period at pi and sine starts at zero and ends at zero. So we're going to go to pi and then we're going to put our end point as well. Now in the middle of sine, oh look at that, another zero. So we want to find halfway between zero and pi. So the distance here is pi, what's half of pi? Well, half of pi. So we're gonna be at zero there. Now, here's kind of the tricky part because of the way this is labeled. Halfway between the middle and the beginning, we have a maximum. So if we think about this in terms of tick marks now, maybe instead of pies, this is one, two, three tick marks. So half of three, we're gonna go one and a half and then go up to our maximum because sine goes up first. Same thing between the middle uh, midline point and the end midline point. Halfway between that we have a minimum, so we're gonna go one and a half down to our minimum. And then this is our sine graph. And that's not perfect, but oh well. And then now that you have this labeled, you could repeat this forever, because we go one, two, three, midpoint. One, two, three, midpoint. One, two, three, midline. One, two, three, midline. Halfway, maximum. Halfway, minimum. And then look at that. Really quickly, we have another full period. You could even go backwards. One, two, three. One, two, three's over there somewhere. We have a max here, so the next one should be a minimum. Midline, one and a half, maximum. And then you get a really nice sine wave. Cool. So if you follow the pro tips in order, that should help you graph these or at least be able to identify them pretty quick. All right, we got two more examples just to make sure you don't uh, you know, get too scared or cry. So uh, start with your midline. Let's do red this time. I haven't done red yet. So our midline is at K. So we're gonna be at Y equals K. We can go ahead and graph that. Let's make it a little skinnier, make it red. So we're going to be at, whoops, at one, because K is one. All right. Now our amplitude is three. So we need to go up three from one. So we're going to go one, two, three. We're going to put a horizontal line there. So let's put our horizontal line. That's our maximum. Then we're gonna go down three from the midline, one, two, three, and that will be our minimum. I'll just scoot those so they look right. Okay, perfect. All right, so our minimum is at negative two, and then our maximum is at four. All right, let's find our period. So our period is two pi, divided by b, which is this one half. So to divide by a fraction, that's gonna be two pi divided by, or rather, uh, when you divide by a fraction, you flip the bottom and then multiply instead. So multiply, flip this, would be two over one, which is two. Our period is four pi. All right, so our period is four pi. And now we need to label our x-axis intelligently. So I need to get to at least four pi, but if I start labeling it the way that we did here, here's pi, one, two, three, four, five, six. Here would be two pi. You're gonna, I'm gonna run out of x-axis, right? We're not gonna get there. So let's maybe graph by Mm, let's see, how do we want to graph by four pi? Um, maybe we'll uh, just shrink it a little bit. We'll do every other one, right? Let's go by thirds instead of sixes. 
instead of sixths. It's kind of hard to say. So this will be pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, pi, 4 pi over 3, 5 pi over 3, 2 pi, uh, let's see, 6, 7 pi over 3, 8 pi over 3, 3 pi, uh, 9, 10 pi over 3, 11 pi over 3, 4 pi. Okay, that's what we mean by labeling intelligently. If you go by the standard, uh, all the pi over sixes on the unit circle, then you might run out of room, right? You gotta condense that thing to make it a little bit uh, skinnier. What that's gonna do though, is it's gonna make it look not as wide. If I graphed this graph on here, what it would look like would be more like that. You're not even gonna get the second half. If the full period is two pi, this is half a period, a full up. We still need the whole down. It would look super uh, stretched out. Because we've taken our x-axis and condensed it, it's gonna squish it, so now it's gonna look kinda nice like a sine wave. But just realize if you stretch or squish your x-axis, it only really makes sense to compare what they look like on that same axis. So maybe we'll graph the parent function on here just to peek, but all right. Um, now our horizontal shift, again, I don't have an H just because it's kind of tricky, so uh, it's zero again. All right, now we need to ask ourselves, how do I graph cosine? So cosine, if we go back and look, wait, where did I put it? Here we go. Cosine does not start at your midline. Cosine starts at a maximum and if we flip this thing upside down, it will start at a minimum. So ours is cosine. It should start at a maximum, except our a value is negative. So it needs to start at a min. Did I say min twice? Normally cosine starts at a max. It's negative. It starts at a minimum. Okay. Wherever your graph starts, sine or cosine, it should also end in the same spot. So we start at negative two, we need to end at negative two at the end of our period at four pi. Okay. In the middle of cosine, we are going to be at a maximum. So half of four pi would be two pi. We need to go to our max. Then halfway between the minimum and the maximums, there should be zero points or points on your midline. So that's gonna be half of two pi would be pi. So we're gonna be here at pi and then at three pi right there. So our cosine graph for this function will look like this. Okay, so you could again repeat this by looking at the patterns or just counting tick marks. So we go from a minimum to a midline to a maximum and back again every three you change. So you go one, two, three, next one. One, two, three, up. One, two, three, midline. One, two, three, minimum. So we could go one, two, three. This would be a midline. We could go one, two, three, midline. One, two, three, maximum. And then you could continue your graph that way. All right, cool. Let's do one more just to really beat this thing to death and then uh, you guys can go do your homework. All right, so let's let's do purple. I already did purple, let's do green, I like green. Okay, so our midline is gonna be at our k value. So y equals negative two. Let's graph our line, make it dash, make it skinny, make it green. What color green do you guys like? Mm, that one. So our midline is gonna be at Ooh, that's, I missed. Let's fix that at negative two. Now our amplitude here is two. So we need to go up two from this and down two from this. So up two, 
our maximum would be at y equals zero, and our minimum down to would be at y equals negative four. So we're gonna be at zero and at negative four. Just those so they look correct. There we go. Um, then we need to find our period and our horizontal shift. This one we will have a horizontal shift so you at least get to see it. So our period is two pi divided by b. b is two. So this is gonna be pi again. Oops, how do you draw pi like that? Now our horizontal shift is equal to h divided by b. Okay, so two pi divided or pi over three divided by two. Um, one way we could think about that is pi over three times a half. Right, dividing by two and multiplying by a half are the same thing. So multiply straight across, we get a pi on top, and three times two is six. So we're gonna shift this pi over six. Because this is positive, remember it does the reverse. So h is actually a negative pi over three. So this could be shifted left pi over six. All right. So now we need to label our x-axis intelligently. Because we are having a period of pi again, we'll use our typical pi over six uh, interval. So this is gonna be pi over six, uh, uh, let's see, pi over three, pi over two, uh, two pi over three. Sorry, I don't have these memorized very well. Five pi over six pi, seven pi over six, uh, four pi over three, and we'll call that good. And then because we're shifting left, we're gonna go onto the negative side a little bit for this graph. So let's put a couple negative ones. So we'll do negative pi over six, negative pi over three, negative pi over two, and that should be good. All right, so now that we have all of our information here, this should not be super, super hard for us. Um, so we're gonna start with where do we start the graph? Cosine normally starts at a maximum, but our A value is negative, so we need to start at a minimum. Um, let's make this a little fatter. And we're sh shifting left pi over six. So we would start at a minimum, but let's go left our pi over six. So left, one tick mark. Our period is pi. So I need to go a distance of pi from where I start. It doesn't mean end at pi. It means go that far over. So let's see how far is pi. Pi is one, two, three, four, five, six tick marks. So we're gonna go six tick marks from where we started. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Uh, notice that it's just left one tick mark or left pi over six from whatever the period is. So you could think of it that way too. If you shift your starting point left one, you shift your ending point left one as well. The whole thing moves. All right, so this is six tick marks or pi wide. So halfway on a cosine graph, we go from a minimum to a maximum. So we go one, two, three, maximum. And then in between, halfway between the minimums and maximums, we should have midpoints. So we're gonna go one and a half midpoint, one and a half midpoint. There's our cosine graph. Now we could extend this by just going every three, we switch between a minimum and a maximum. So we go one, two, three, maximum, one, two, three, minimum. Then we go one and a half, midline, one and a half, midline. And it's very easy to repeat that way. All right, so hopefully this was a little bit easier than yesterday. I think once you have the full picture, it really starts to come together. Um, but you know, I, you guys, 
if I if I didn't give you a 40 minute video, would it even be Mr. Barton's pre-cal class? I don't think so. So um, if you need any help or advice or you just need a shoulder to cry on because trig operations are scary, hop in the Discord, let me know. I'll be there for you. Uh, otherwise, have a wonderful day.